Hello everyone, this is Jinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. Today, let's talk about optimal damage hammer sets. Now, before we get into things, I do want to quickly mention something. First off, the background footage for this video is provided by our friend Hybris. Hybris is a phenomenal hammer speedrunner, but also is going to be fighting an end-end game monster in this video. Now, the game has been out for about three weeks now, so we do feel more comfortable showing off these monsters. However, if you want to prevent that being spoiled for you, then the link to an album with all the builds in it is in the description. So if you don't want to see this monster and what the fight looks like, we'd recommend just checking out the album instead. The final reminder before we get into the bulk of the video is that we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and various memes we make, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. We are equal business partners, so following us on these two platforms is two of the best ways you can help support us completely for free. Alright, let's talk about what the meta hammer sets look like in Iceborne. Now a quick note that we didn't mention while talking about our meta longsword build is that these builds can technically be more optimal if you use one piece of high rank armor. Hammer, just like every single raw weapon in Iceborne, does use a classic Master Ranks Master's Touch set, which is essentially the new version of Draken. Now, if you replace the helmet with the Teostragama version, you can fit an extra level 2 deco in, so normally an agitator. The only problem is this is less than a 1% damage gain, while you end up taking roughly 11% more damage from monster attacks. We do not think this is a worthwhile trade-off, so we do not recommend it. However, if you are a speedrunner, this is how you're going to squeeze in a little bit extra damage. Alright, so first off, let's talk about the sets for the weapon you can see on screen that Hybris is using, the Acidic Lavenous Hammer. Let's cover the Max Deeps version of this first. So this does use the standard meta raw set, which is going to be Teostra helmet, arms, and waist, along with a Brute Tigrex chest and a Young Garuga legs. Get used to seeing this set, this is the new Dragon. Now to fully optimize this build, you do need to have two Agitator plus decos and an Attack plus deco. However, if you are lacking these decos, you can just slot in either regular or combo decos into these slots instead, and the build still functions just fine. You'll still hit high enough affinity to be at 100% on softened weak points with Agitator active. Now, this build hits a disgusting 784.24 EFR. For reference, compared to the highest EFR build that existed for old high rank hammer, this is a 33.7% increase in EFR. Between the fact that you have very nice motion values on Hammer and also your KO got buffed in Iceborne, this is an insane amount of damage you can be dealing. There's a reason Hammer has always been one of the top 3 melee weapons in terms of clear times. But anyway, this build does run your standard Master's Touch, Critical I7, Weakness Exploit 3, Critical Boost 3 with a 0% affinity weapon and as much raw as you can stack afterwards. Non-elemental boost gives us an extra 5% to our base true raw. Now, the two attack augments on this weapon do count as base true raw. The augments put it at 300 base true raw then, meaning that we get an extra 15 raw from non-elemental boost, definitely not shabby. So if this build is so ridiculously strong and deals the highest damage, why would we consider using any of the other builds that are going to be on the list. Well, that's because this only has 10 units of purple, meaning you have to play fairly cleanly for it to work. Now, Hammer is one of the two weapons in Iceborne that we consider it viable to run only 10 units of sharpness on, the other being Greatsword. Now, with Hammer at least, you have the second best soften attack in the game right behind Lance, and you deal so much burst damage, keeping Clutch Claw flinches up isn't particularly difficult. This means the monster's head's pretty much much always soften, and because you're hammering deal KO damage to the head, you're always aiming for the head anyway. So all in all, it's fairly easy for you to keep your 10 units of sharpness up on hammer just due to the nature of how it plays. But that being said, if you aren't super clean, you may want to run other options, which we will cover in a second. Now another issue with this build is you don't have a health augment. Now health augment for endgame grinding is questionably useful because you take so much damage from tempered monsters that you might as well just full heal after any time you get hit. But assuming you do want to use a health augment on the Acidic Laughness Hammer, this is what the build looks like. So the build hasn't changed here, except for now we have a health augment and an affinity augment instead. Now the reason we go with an affinity augment is because the health augment takes up 3 points, the grinding mallet being our 11 can only have 5 points, so we cannot fit an attack augment on here because that also costs 3 points. We also can't put a slot augment here to get an extra attack boost or something because that also costs 3 points. And elements won't do anything for 
4 is here, so our only two viable options are either running 2 defense boost, which is kind of useless, or to run an affinity augment. So we run affinity augment here, just in case we get a few whiffs on weak points, or in case the monster stays unagitated for a period of time while we're beating on it. Now between losing the 2 attack augments and also losing the extra damage from non elemental boost applied to those attack augments, we do drop 19.48 EFR. This loses us about 2.5% damage, which is nothing to sneeze at, but health augment is much more comfortable. Also on both of these builds, if you're playing in multiplayer, you of course want flinch free, so just sub out some agitator for flinch free because it's the least return on investment skill you have here. Normally we would sub out the attack, but if we sub out the attack here, we drop below attack boost 4, which is no bueno. Alright, let's move on to the next build and what our personal recommendation is if you don't feel you're clean enough to play with 10 units of sharpness. And that is the head pet hammer, the Shara Ishvalder hammer. This time we'll start with the comfiest set, which is going to be the Health Augment set, because if you're running the Shara Ishvalda over Acidic Lavernous, you're valuing more comfort. Now at 743.37 EFR, this is a 2.87% EFR drop compared to the Acidic Lavernous Health Augment set we just showed off. However, you get 30 units of purple sharpness on this set, and also you get to head pat monsters to death. This is undeniably a much more comfy build to run, especially for general grinding lance farming. The Acidic Glavness builds we just showed off are definitely higher damage, and if you are a skilled hammer user, we urge you to try maintaining the 10 units of purple sharpness, because it's easier than you might think it is. But if, like me, you're not a skilled hammer main, you just enjoy using hammer occasionally, this is the set to go with. I personally use this set all the time because, well, I don't play Hammer that often. And again, you may not have the Double Challenger plus Decos, but if you don't, just sub in any regular combo Decos you have of Agitator, Critical, or Tenderizer. Now you may be wondering, what if we ditch the Health Augment and run a damage set on Shara instead? Well, there's really no reason to do that. To illustrate why, this is what a full damage loadout for the Shara Hammer looks like without Health Augment. So in order for this to work, we essentially run an Attack Augment instead of Health Augment, and then we also run a Double Attack attack deco instead of the handicraft deco because it still has 20 units of purple sharpness this way. This puts us at 764.78 EFR. This is the exact same EFR as the health augment version of the S Glavinus, which sounds pretty nice. After all, we have twice as much purple sharpness. But here's the thing, if you'll recall, this is 2.54% less EFR than the Acidic Glavinus with attack augment hits. But also here's the thing, the Acidic Glavinus set with attack augments also hits 744.73 EFR when it's in white sharpness, which is 2.68% lower EFR than this build in purple. Which basically means if with the Acidic Glavinus full damage setup you hit at least 50% of the time in purple sharpness, you're dealing the same damage as this build if not more. Now this does have twice as much sharpness, but that basically means in sloppy runs, the Acidic Glavinus full attack build is still better. So yeah, the shower is really only better if you're using Health Augment for comfier sharpness runs. Alright, there is one more build that is going to be fairly competitive with the other choices, but at least in our opinion is worse. And that is the Runer Nergagante Hammer. So the nice thing about the Runer Nergagante Hammer is you don't have to run Master's Touch on this. With 110 natural units of white sharpness on hammer, you don't have to worry about running out of sharpness. Now with this amount of sharpness, you would think it's comfier than the Shara hammer, but that isn't really the case. In order for you to lose all of your purple sharpness on the Shara hammer, you would have to whiff unagitated weak points 55 times on average to lose all 30 units. And if you hit non-weak points with Agitator active, you have to hit 63 on average before you lose all of your purple sharpness. So in other words, as long as you're hitting softened weak points at least 50% of the time with the Shara Hammer, you have the same sharpness as this weapon. Now with 753.98 EFR, this does hit higher EFR than the Shara Hammer does with peak performance active. However, let's look at the EFR without peak active. It drops to 717.02 EFR, that's a 5.15% drop. Now if we compare this to the Health Augment Shara build we showed earlier, we can see that there is a 1.43% EFR gain from using the Nurgagante Hammer in peak over the Sharo Hammer. 
but we can see that the Shara Hammer has a 3.67% EFR increase over the Nurgigante Hammer when it doesn't have Peak active. This means we need to have a 72% active uptime on Peak in order to equal the Shara Hammer's damage. Now, 72% uptime doesn't necessarily sound like a lot, but keep in mind they did nerf Health Augment in Iceborne. We need to do more precise testing, but it feels around 7.5% of your damage or so is healed. And a thing to keep in mind when it comes to big burst weapons like the Hammer or Greatsword is that yes, you may heal a little under a quarter of your health with a nice upswing, but also you don't get peak on that upswing because you have to heal. Now our new sets in Master Rank do hit about 30% harder, which kind of levels it out, but also Master Rank monsters have a Master Rank Defense mod. Now we don't know what the exact numbers on this are, but I've heard estimates anywhere from 15 to 30%, so overall health augment is weaker than it used to be. Anyway, personally we do not recommend the Runa Nurik Hammer over the Shara Hammer unless you are sure you can keep over that 72% peak uptime. And yes, the Runa Nurik does get dragon damage, but it's only 18 dragon damage, which is 20.7 after the elemental model for a full white. On 3 star weak dragon monsters, this is generally going to be about a 30 hit zone value on the head, so that's 6 damage per hit, it's negligible. Although Elder Seal is kind of neat, I guess. And one nice advantage of the Runa Nurg is, as mentioned, it doesn't have to run Master's Touch, so it is your go-to choice if you want to run a different set bonus, like the Free Meal Secret, for example. Both the Acidic Glavinus as well as the Shara Hammer require you run Master's Touch for them to function. Okay, that is every single one of the meta raw hammer builds. We haven't looked into elemental hammer, but I'm like 95% sure it isn't good because hammer has the second highest motion values in the game next to greatsword, meaning raw is pretty much the go-to for it. And we did not cover a para hammer weapon because we don't really consider it meta even against para matchups, especially with how fast you can get KOs now in Iceborne. But if that's the sort of thing you'd be interested in seeing, let us know in the comments below because Tuna and I are considering doing an off meta series series as well. Also, I've been hearing a lot about the Zora Magdros hammer and I want to cover briefly why it's not good. So first off, it has 20 units of purple even with the exact same set as the Shara hammer. Secondly, this set hits exactly 100% affinity with Agitator active on softened weak points. And in order to do this, we have to run two affinity augments. Also, the Zora Magdros hammer is one of the Zora Magdros weapons that cannot have custom orgs, so we cannot use affinity customs here. So this puts us at a very low 723.91 EFR. Now the most fair comparison for this is the Shara damage set because it also runs 20 units of purple. So the Shara hits 764.78 EFR, this ends up being a 5.65% difference in EFR. This means you have to get 5 total blast procs during the hunt to equalize in damage. Now I'll admit I'm not certain whether this is a realistic value or not with 510 blast on the weapon. But short of using Apothecary Mantle, I do doubt you can hit this many blasts during a hunt. Especially considering that Hammer is one of the relatively slower hitting weapons in the game, so it applies a lot less status per second than other weapons. There's also the simple issue that you cannot run Health Augment on this weapon. If you do, you drop to 90% affinity on Soften Weak Points with Agitator active, which makes it very likely for you to hit Purple Sharpness during the hunt. And if you're gonna play cleanly enough to justify not using Health Augment, you might as well just use the Acidic Lavinous Hammer. And on top of that, you have even lower affinity on non-soften weak points or without agitator active than all of the other weapons. Which means that unless you're playing perfectly and only ever hitting the head while it's softened, you will be getting less crits, at which point you might as well just play a sick Lavinous. Alright, that is all of the hammer builds. Thank you as always for checking out the video. And if you have any friends who enjoy head patting monsters, be sure to share the video with them. And if you are excited to head pat all of the monsters to death, be sure to let us know by liking the video and leaving a comment below. It really does help. Huge thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with and that we use to make all of these beautiful build cards. And of course, a huge thank you to Hybris, whose amazing Brute Tigrex run was the background footage for this video. Hybris is a hammer god, and if you want to see this clean Brute Tigrex gameplay without all the stuff in the way, be sure to check out his channel. Link in the top right and description. And of course, if you would like to find some like-minded hunters of all different skill levels to hunt with, or just come chat about Iceborne stuff, be sure to check out our Discord server, The Mathalos Nest. 
we do have Icebond specific channels to make sure that all of the PC players do not get spoiled. And of course, don't forget we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos, memes we make, and just things that interest us, and Tuna does stream almost every single day live on Twitch. Be sure to go show him some love, he is a huge part of why we are able to do what we do. And of course, none of this would be possible without the generosity of our patrons. No new patrons today, but regardless, thank you all so much for the support you provide us. It really means a lot to know you all have our backs, so thank you so much. Alright, that is all I have for you on this one, but we have a lot more videos on the way. There is so much Iceborne stuff to cover. So if you'd like to see those videos as soon as they come out, be sure to hit the subscribe button, also the notification bell, because if you click the notification bell, YouTube will notify you anytime videos come out, otherwise it just kind of doesn't. Yeah! Happy hunting, hunters! We'll see you on the next one. Bye!